I've got something really special for you today. It's not often that we do old classic boats on motorboat and yachting, but when something is as unique and extraordinary as this, we can't resist taking a look. So welcome to Dorian. She is a 1915 boat. She's one of the very few boats that has served in both world wars. And now she has been completely rebuilt and restored to be a private motor yacht. So she was built in 1915. And if you look very closely, you can see her original builder's marks giving the date and the fact that she was built in Portsmouth. And that is because she was originally built as an open rowing pinnace for the Royal Navy. So she was a supply boat for one of the big battleships and she was rowed by about 37, 38 people, completely open. There was no engine when she was built in 1915. And then she was converted in the 1930s into a private motor yacht, a gentleman's motor yacht, uh, where she served many happy years under private ownership until the Second World War, when she was requisitioned to be part of the Dunkirk Rescue Project Dynamo, where she went over to France, rescued people off the beaches, took them back to England, and then carried on serving for the Navy in Chichester for the rest of the war before she was converted back into a private motor yacht and again spent several decades cruising around through the canals of France before eventually she fell into disrepair and like many boats she ended up as a houseboat on the Thames and there she stayed for a good many years uh, until a rather sad story of a young girl who was living on board at the time, it was her uncle's boat. Uh, there was a fire on board, which unfortunately she lost her life in it um, and destroyed much of the boat. And when she was discovered, she was then put in a boatyard and left more or less to rot for about 10 years before the Dunkirk Little Ships Trust found her realised what she was, bought her for a pound. She was really a burnt out wreck at the time. And then the Dunkirk's Little Ship Restoration Trust then started working on. She was taken down to Southampton where work began restoring her hull. And if we take a look inside, we can see some of that. So if we go down into the main saloon, you can start to see some of the construction work and uh, much of the certainly underwater hull is original. The top sides have been rebuilt, but you can see these oak frames and then there is beautiful double diagonal teak planking on top. It's very sturdy, very secure. So even though she was gutted by fire inside, the hull itself was all fine and she was brought back to life by the Dunkirk Little Ships Restoration Trust using combination of volunteers until more recently she was purchased by Nigel and Lynn who have restored her and completed and turned her into this very lovely modern cruiser really. This is the saloon you can see it's still a bit of work to be finished but this is the seating area and an original table from another Dunkirk's little ship and over on this side this whole area actually pulls out and becomes an extra double berth. And under here, if you look inside, there's actually a television that, that pops up. So it's got all the modern amenities on this beautiful traditional hull. The galley itself, again, actually really usable. Still some work to be done here, but you can see there's a beautiful Korean top, a big double sink. I need two hands of that, so it's a bit too heavy. So you can see the sink, there's a freezer under there. Beautiful mahogany cupboards. This tongue and groove work, beautifully white painted. And it's actually remarkably light down here. You can see these lovely skylights overhead that open up and left plenty of fresh air in. And some of these original doors. This is the day heads, the shower. And then through into the 
forward cabin. And again, it's got beautiful daylight streaming in, another nice skylight. Here you can see some of the original, you can see this looks more original, you can see some of the original planking here. These new brass ports are in fact new, but they look the part. And actually here you can see one of the original rowing thwarts. So this is one of the seats where the sailors would have actually sat rowing this vessel. And you can see here the oak framework and some of the copper pins that hold it all together. And now this is the forward guest cabin for children and grandchildren. And then back out, here's that lovely saloon area again. Here's the seating. Nice new brass lights, beautiful little corner cupboards. And that magnificent skylight up there, letting light and air through. And you can see, again, some of the original carving in that frame. And then back out into the wheelhouse. And the idea is to make this a really usable cruising boat. So there's a single per Perkins diesel engine, uh, all the modern electrics that you need, chart plotter, VHF, but still with a style of a classic gentleman's cruiser. So this lovely wheelhouse, glass all around, opening doors, varnished mahogany, and there you can see the official Dunkirk recognition brass plaque and again lots of lovely opening windows you can let the fresh air in but then if we look back down now this is where they made quite a big change because if you see out on the aft deck they have built this rather lovely open helm originally it would have just had the interior wheelhouse helm but they've created this rather lovely exterior helm with a reversible bench seat up top proper ship's wheel and this rather lovely windscreen surround and little bench seat at the back there will be some cushions on there but I'll show you what that means down below by raising the height of that deck and stealing a little bit from the side decks they've created a really lovely aft cabin down here so if we drop down into the aft cabin here you can see there's a good size double bed, proper sprung mattress, plenty of headroom, lovely brass ports all around, letting light in. And again, there is another little opening hatch here. I won't open it actually because it's all shut up for the moment, but that gives a little hatch out onto the aft deck again, letting air in. And here you can see some of the diagonal planking. I don't know if you can see, you can just see the joins between. So there is the teak planking with a calico and linseed soaked uh, layer in between them to provide the waterproofing and then caulking in between the planks. And that keeps it all watertight and gives that beautiful rigidity of those double diagonal planks. And here they've made a really nice little ensuite bathroom with its own shower. Again, there's still a bit of finishing work to be done. But you can see in that ensuite aft cabin, there's a really good sized heads compartment. So they have managed to create a very usable, very lovely, classic motor yacht with all the style and history you could possibly wish for, but also made it into a really comfortable, usable, modern cruising boat. And I think it is an absolute credit to them and to all the people who have worked on it, many of them volunteers, to have not only saved this lovely boat, but turned it into something usable that they can enjoy all year round. It's got all the mod cons, it's got heating, it's got a usable galley, it's got a modern, reliable diesel engine. Beautiful, beautiful foredeck, just look at that. This is actually a, a, a pitch pine foredeck. I'm told it was originally part of a church flooring that has been rescued and used to recreate this lovely foredeck. 
and you can see that varnished mahogany just glowing in the sunlight absolutely lovely and these skylights from on deck really do look the part absolutely magnificent what a beautiful thing and what a lovely alternative to a modern cruising boat you could happily spend this much on a modern GRP boat and really not end up with anything terribly special it would be nice enough but it wouldn't have half the character or appeal of this look at that beautiful rounded canoe stern and the big single propeller and that lovely little aft pulpit and there you can see the little hatch that opens up into the aft cabin and that outside helm station lots of guardrails all around it they're going to use it with their children and grandchildren and you can see just what a lovely thing that will be rather than having just another GRP boat it's an absolutely beautiful historic vessel over a hundred years old served in both world wars and yet once again it is a usable cruising boat what a thing of absolute beauty and a credit to her new owners i hope you enjoyed that very brief tour of an unusual classic boat don't forget to clock back in and we'll bring you some more tours as soon as we can thank you for watching